shots, the showmanship. He's there was something. He gave you something to watch. Here are the dancing eyebrows. It wasn't a very um, competitive fight. Not a very exciting fight. And unfortunately, not a very impressive. Um, you can't say performance, I guess, by Gerald Big Baby Miller. I got a chance to talk to him last week. If you didn't see the interview, it's right here on the channel. He see the doctor walking up. He realized Bach was not using that right hand at all. And he wasn't going to leave him out there just as a one-handed piece of meat to be picked on. So, so let me mute this for now. Um... It was a ninth round referee stoppage. Uh, Mary Ujwak, he, um, he broke his hand. Clearly he broke his hand and he was fighting one handed for what? About, you know, two rounds, three quarters, something like that. Maybe three rounds. By the way, I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. So Big Baby Miller, after this fight, now that he's won, is likely going to go on to be in an IBF. Let's listen. Baby Miller's exploitation of the ponderous Marius Bach. And you see that Miller landed more than twice as many punches. Threw nearly twice as many punches. And landed at a higher connect percentage. Power shots. Miller more than tripling Marius Box in this category. Nearly tripling him in terms of the number thrown and landing at a creditable percentage of 38%. We're waiting for the post fight interview. He always has some. So, Big Baby Miller has the 20th victory of his career and the 18th knockout. Still two thirds of the way through our World Championship Boxing Triple Ladder. And yet to come, Daniel Miracle Man Jacobs, one of the top fighters in the middleweight division, plus with opportunities, looks to make it. So, he's not going to do a post fight interview. Well, hmm, that's kind of odd. But anyway. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Um, now 20 0 and 1 with um, 18 KOs. He's coming off of the Fred Cossey fight. First was the biggest fight of his career at that point in time. Then the Gerald Washington fight. I was um, was I at that fight? I was at that fight. That was um, Bruno versus Garcia. You know, and then the Marius Walk fight, which is um, supposed to be according to him. Um, in accordance with Eddie Hearn's plan, is supposed to get him into an IBF eliminator, and then he'll fight Anthony Joshua, if Anthony Joshua still has that title, but it wouldn't be for about a year or so from now. Um, Here's the thing. Now, it was a ninth-round referee stoppage. This was um, Big Baby Miller's first fight on HBO under the new promotional company of Matchroom USA, even though Matchroom is well-known, the number one uh, promotional company over in the UK right now. Um, this is their first card here promoting with Rock Nation Sports with um, Big Baby Miller Promotions. He says he's his own promoter and Salida and in Star Boxing. And basically, you know, he's going to get shit for this fight. And I can see where people are going to be like, yo, he's not that good. He can't beat a Wilder. You know, he can't beat a, um, you know, an Anthony Joshua. It's just, you know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, maybe maybe I can't really think about it right now, but I'm trying to figure out what it is that I feel that he's missing. You can't really say it's the skill, you know, and he is, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, six foot four, you know, 285. He came into this fight 283. You know, his last fight, he was um, just a little under 300, you know, so he's a he's a large dude. So you you don't expect for him to be the most, you know, fleet of foot. But one thing is for sure is he doesn't gas out. But something is missing skill-wise where I look and say, what does he really have that can, you know, stop an Anthony Joshua? What does he really have that can stop a, um, Deontay Wilder? And, and you know, looking at the style that he presents, I think a Deontay Wilder can beat him, especially if that right hand. See, Deontay Wilder, even though despite he doesn't have any good names on his resume and the way things are stacking up right now, um, Big Baby Miller's resume is getting up there with a... With a with um, Deontay Wilder, and that's crazy, you know, but it's not Deontay Wilder's fault what happened with Povetkin or what happened with Luis Ortiz, but whatever the case may be, Gerald Big Baby Miller is now in the mix, in the mix heavy, because he's got right now, in my opinion, you know, 
I'm still going to say, even though he's not a promoter, he's a manager, advisor, whatever, I'm still going to say Al Heyman is still the number one promoter in the game. But however, Eddie Hearn, you got to say Eddie Hearn is number two. You know, especially with this venture that he's doing, you know, trying to, you know, come in to the United States, putting on their first card here in the United States up in New York. You know, he signed up a heavyweight. You know, he signed up um, Danny Jacobs, you know, and he's trying to make some moves. But where, you know, I just don't, I'm sorry. You know, I'm trying not to be too critical, but I just don't see Big Baby Miller being, you know, like, you know, being able to hold his own, you know, in the heavyweight division among the heavyweights we have right now, you know, the champions. You know, maybe he can beat a Joseph Parker, but I don't know. You know, am I being too critical? Let me know. You know, and I watched all of his fights that are available. And and I've noticed that once he starts stepping up in competition, the better the competition, you know, has gotten, you know, he, he hasn't looked, you know, it seems as though he's not looking as good. But that's how it is, right? And also looking at, you know, he was kind of, you can't say he was struggling with Walk, but Walk at one point in time was fighting, you know, for what, three rounds or so with one hand. You know, and, and and he still couldn't finish him off. He should have finished him off. You know, this was a referee stop. It's not off of, you know, punishment taking. It was it was it was it was it was um the fact that uh, Marie's walk was literally in real pain. You saw it. He couldn't fire his right hand. And then when he was, you know, it just it just wasn't there. So there's so many questions, you know, when I look at, OK, well, where does big baby Miller go from here? You know, now looking at the looking at the situation, he may be ordered. He may be ordered sometime in the next few months, you know, four months, maybe five at most to fight Kubret Pulev. You know, can he beat a Kubret Pulev? So, as I said, looking at his resume, you can see that each fight, you know, is getting bigger than the last. Fred Cossey had a nice little, you know, some 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 steam behind his name with fights with Chris Ariola. Huey Fury, you know, um, 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 what was it, Gerald Washington too, or Dominic Brazil, I forgot. You know, and then he fought Gerald Washington, you know, who at that point in time was coming off of a loss to Deontay Wilder for a world championship. And now he's fighting Maurice Watt, who, you know, has a resume of being a well-known international outside of the United States, somewhat journeyman of, of, of some sorts. And he, you know, so can he beat a Kubret Pulev? There are so many different questions you know and one thing you got to like about him is he is very well spoken as far as you know he know how to sell his fight you know like in this day and age a lot of people be too much you know excuse my language pussies when it comes to certain shit you know when it comes to boxing they be like oh wow this is the sport you know you should show respect and everything like that yo in this day and age to make money you gotta talk shit in this day and age in this boxing landscape you got to talk shit unless you Anthony Joshua or over in the UK, you know, like that. It don't it don't work like that over here in the United States right now. Like being a nice guy in boxing over here in the United States. I'm sorry. It finishes last. You could be that nice guy all you want, but then you can't be talking about how you want to be the face of boxing. The face of boxing is not the nice guy over here in the United States. It's, it's flying like that over in the UK with um with uh, Anthony Joshua, Mr. Say Everything right all the time and i said it before and there's no disrespect to anthony joshua but to me that shit just be seeming fake i'm not saying he's fake and then i noticed that anthony joshua has like a lot of casual you know um support and there's nothing wrong with that because the casuals bring in the money but however those are the people that you can't debate with because they don't watch boxing they only watch anthony joshua or select few fights you know and also he can't do no wrong to them so for example I said some shit like like I said um today like man Anthony Joshua missed the nice guy all the time you know he always he be he used to be he be sounding it sounds fake I'm not saying it is fake people are like Anthony Joshua's not fake <laughs> you know they get real emotional over Anthony Joshua you know but as they say you know us in the United States we don't support our own like we should when it comes to boxing you know, and where the UK, they really stand behind their boxes. But when it comes to me, don't get it twisted. My personal opinion is, like, for journalistic integrity, you can't take sides. Of course, I may want American fighters to succeed. Of course, I want black fighters to succeed. That's the fallacy, is that I'm some guy on here just like, oh, he's against the color and everything. No, like, from what I learned, you know, and I'm relatively new to this whole journalism stuff. What I learned is no matter what, you want to maintain something called journalistic integrity. 
where you don't want to be just riding with people because of their name, because of their race, or because of where they're from. You know, so somebody can somebody that I like today as far as a boxer can get knocked the fuck out, and then I'll meme you to smithereens. You know? You know, I hold no punches for nobody. And that's the way it should be. And that's why you see a lot of media people align themselves like with certain bot or more so YouTube media, which is the reason why YouTube media is not respected as it should be, even though we bring in a lot of numbers and we're the ones who people engage with, the ones who are actually watching the fights. But you get a lot of YouTube media who align themselves with fighters to get ahead. And that's why their journalistic integrity is tainted. You know, it's a shit stain. Anyway, I'm T Street Controversy. I don't know where that little rant came from. This is T Street Controversy Live. I got to get to the um, Jacobs fight, which is on right now. Please subscribe.